Hey guys, Max here and the week is over. Friday is over. Markets have now closed. So how did it all go? Well, pretty damn poorly. As you can see, it was red across the board. It was deep red too. There are little tiny flashes of green from the market yesterday, but almost every stock was down to some extent. In fact, over 80% of the companies in the S&P closed down for the day, which is the first time that has happened throughout the entirety of 2022. Still though, some people will say it wasn't that bad. Those people are wrong. Big tech, of course, did worst. Microsoft and Facebook were both down by 2%. Apple and Amazon were down by almost 3%. And Nvidia was down by more than 3%. Google was down by 4%. Tesla held up well, but that stock is in a complete world of its own. So that isn't too surprising. Financials got completely hammered. Banks were down by 3 or more percent all over the place. Healthcare was in the same sort of boat. Materials, energy and consumer defensives, literally every single sector fell across the S&P. Now the S&P 500 on the whole, as you might expect for such a red day, was down by 2.8% and the Nasdaq was down slightly less at only 2.6%, slightly outperforming the rest of the indexes. Now this was not just the case in the US though, everywhere in the world was down. The FTSE 100, the main index from the UK tracking the 100 largest publicly traded companies, fell by 1.4%. The stock 600, the equivalent for the rest of Europe, was down 1.8%. The Nikkei 225, the equivalent for Japan, again was down by 1.6%. I've started seeing people complain once more that I'm too bearish, but the reality is I'm not bearish, the markets are bearish. People have been saying that I pay more attention to the red days than the green days, but the simple fact is that there have been more red days than there have been green days throughout 2022. If there hadn't been, then the S&P 500 wouldn't be down 11% so far this year, and the Nasdaq wouldn't be down 19% since the year started, and 20% from its highs. Now the week on the whole was actually quite bad too, as you can see here, red for the most part, less so than on the single day, but we need to remember that the scale for this chart is different when we're looking at it for the week as opposed to the day. Bright red on the day means that stocks fell by 3%, on the week though it means they fell by 6%, so not actually much better at all. Nvidia, for example, was down an entire 8% this week. Google was down 6%, Amazon was down 5%, and Facebook fell 12% in a week. These are huge moves, and people are, for the most part, just ignoring it, or it's not registering in their mind, and they're still asking me where the crash is, when it's going to come, but the reality is, it's here. We're in it. We've been in it for three months now, last week included. Now the S&P 500 over the entirety of the week was down 2.6%, the Nasdaq was down 3.6%, people are just selectively remembering Black Monday or Black Wednesday, a singular point in the markets where everything falls apart and they think that everything happens in one day when that's very rarely the case. People remember the dot-com bubble or they've read about it and they read the words dot-com bubble and they assume that bubbles expand and expand and expand and then they pop in an instant and collapse overnight, but that just isn't the way they work. The dot-com bubble took over two years of slow, consistent declines until it actually bottomed. That isn't a pop, it's a collapse over a long, sustained period. Now there is a ray of light for the next week, but it might yet turn out to be bad. It's corporate earnings from companies of Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Visa, McDonald's, Coke, Boeing, UPS, Ford, and a whole bunch more. Now if these earnings are good, we might expect markets to reverse this downtrend, but if they are bad though, we should expect markets to continue to tank, and it is very important to pay attention over the next week because of that reason. Now with my little rant there over, let's get back to the rest of the markets then. The dollar continues to see strengths upon strength. It is still the most trusted, reliable currency in the world, despite what many people who pray for the downfall of the US might want. Inflation in the US is worse than in most places, and yet the dollar continues to outperform, especially against the euro, the yen, and the pound. Why is this the case? Well, pretty simply because the markets and the economies that support those currencies are weaker overseas and they're stronger in the US. So in terms of turmoil, people resort to US dollars as opposed to euros or yen or something else. Now, bond yields fell very slightly for the day, just a couple basis points for the most part. The US 10-year treasury is still sitting incredibly high at 2.89%, so it literally fell just one basis point yesterday. Oil prices did fall slightly as well, down a couple of percent. 
WTI crude oil is now at $102 a barrel and Brent crude oil is sitting at $106 a barrel. No rest for the wicked or those suffering under an energy crisis. Finally, in the world of crypto, again, the markets fell a bit, although only slightly. It was a slightly poor day, but it wasn't awful. Bitcoin and Ethereum are down 1%-ish. Bitcoin is now just below $40,000, only just though, and Ethereum as well is only just below $3,000. The rest of the altcoin market is down a fair bit more though, something like 3% or so across the board. Again, this is just part of that natural general rotation out of risky assets. It is simply the wrong part of a market cycle to be investing in super risky positions that are entirely speculative. And so the markets and investors especially are responding to this by pulling capital out of super risky tech stocks and super risky crypto. Now, there were a few big stories for yesterday. We did get earnings from Verizon and American Express, and they were both pretty poor. Verizon had to cut their sales forecast, and they lost 7% of their share value. American Express reported far higher expenses than anyone was expecting, and so their share price fell by 3% yesterday alone. As mentioned earlier, there are loads of corporate earnings, very big companies coming out next week. And if they're bad, expect a market bloodbath as hundreds of companies just like these ones fall across the board. We better pray they're good, but there is a decent chance they are less than ideal. Now, markets are continuing to price in more and larger Federal Reserve interest rate hikes than they were in the past. And this is worrying investors more. There is even now a possibility of 0.75% interest rate hikes, and it's actually a very real possibility, even if there are some steadfast opponents to this idea, it is a terrifying thing to see for growth stocks and their investors. Now, as I just said, the Cleveland Federal Reserve President, Loretta Mester, has vocally opposed 0.75% rate hikes, saying that she prefers consistent hikes that are smaller, dampening that fire slightly. She's clearly of the mind that asset prices need to be protected in order to try and protect the economy. To be honest, though, I think the vast majority of people these days are just starting to agree that a soft landing is not possible. And at some point, we need to act to protect ourselves against inflation, not a market crash. The consensus amongst the markets right now is that 0.5% rate hikes at some point in 2022 are practically guaranteed, at least at one point. Kathy Wood, though, is claiming that the Federal Reserve won't hike that much at all. She's taken her contrarian point of view again. Do you believe her? Well, you probably shouldn't. She's been wrong about everything regarding the Fed and the inflation so far over the last two years. So I don't know why anyone would really trust her now. On this, I certainly don't. Markets in Europe are getting a little bit worried about the French election that's coming this weekend. Check out Stoic Politics, another one of our channels, for a full-length video explaining everything about that. Link, as always, down below in the description. But in short, a Le Pen win would be terrifying for investors. She is often classified as far-right because of her stance on immigration and nationalism and France first and things like that. But actually, her economic policies are extremely protectionist and more left-wing than anything else, which is a very bad recipe for markets. The Ukraine war is still waging on, of course, with no sign of showing yet, and that will keep markets on edge at least a little bit. Although, for the most part, US markets and US investors are mostly just ignoring that stuff. They're just pretty much putting it to the back of their minds and continuing on with their lives, and there's a decent chance they'll continue to do that unless we see some kind of huge escalation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that can help you protect your portfolio against inflation through fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets on the brink. It's completely free to sign up, so make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get over 7% interest on stablecoins to protect your hard-earned cash from being eaten away by inflation. Thanks for watching, stay stoic. Until next time.